Welcome to Technicians Tuesday, everybody. Today I was all over the place, but most people are going to be concerned with only one thing today. That is putting together the new style Mercury FSM that goes on all the new engines, Verados, 150s, and the new V6 and V8s. So let's get to work. Starting out, we had an older Verado come in that was making noises. The guy who owned the boat said, it sounds like a bag of marbles. So the first thing I checked was the gear lube, and wouldn't you know it, found a ton of metal flakes. So I pulled the lower unit and removed the bearing carrier. I'm sure you can guess what we found. That's right, some missing teeth on the gears. This lower unit needs to see a dentist. Then, while waiting for a boat to come in, I pulled the VST off of a Yamaha F-150. Pretty simple process. You just pull the entire induction system with it. There's just two 10 millimeter bolts in the front and six more on the side to remove the airbox. With that off, you disconnect the two switches in the pan, the injectors, and all the other sensors here on top. With the harness out of the way, you take off the water lines and the fuel lines, remove the 12 millimeter bolts, and don't forget to disconnect this linkage here. Then simply pull the whole thing off. And that brings us to what you guys really want to see, the FSM. This was the first time my buddy Ramiro had to deal with one of these, so I had to go and help him out with a quick tutorial on it. And now, just like you after this, he can do these things with no problem. I will link to a 154 stroke video and the first FSM video that we made so that you can see how to remove the FSM. So I'm sorry for today because I didn't get to take this off, you don't get to see that part. Starting out, we will remove the four bolts holding it together. After getting those out, you want to be careful prying this apart because most of the time there is still fuel left inside of it, which is going to go everywhere when it finally splits apart. They are super hard to open up, so don't be afraid of using some real force. Once it does come apart though, begin to remove all of the components. There's a top piece that you will also have to pull out. These can get really stuck in there, so just try not to damage it when you're pulling it out. Then fish out all of the o-rings and rubber gaskets that go on the pumps and the four copper tubes that run the fuel and water. On the top of the top piece that we pulled out, there's a fuel pressure regulator. You're going to want to pull that out by bending the two tabs over and pulling it out. This will most likely need to be cleaned. Continue pulling out all of the rubber pieces from the top piece. Then you can pull out the fuel pumps and the copper tubes that are probably still stuck in the bottom housing. Make sure you find all of the rubber pieces and o-rings so that you don't leave anything behind. You will most likely find that the tubes are heavily corroded. Just take them to a wire wheel and clean them up. Make sure the ends are really clean where the o-rings sit and also inspect them for pitting or holes. This one had a hole in the fuel tube, so we had to order all new tubes and a seal kit to get this one back up and running. You should actually just count on needing the seal kit to put these back together, but with clean or new tubes, it still isn't quite time to put it back together. Before beginning to put it back together, it is extremely crucial that we clean every single surface in all three of the plastic housings. There can't be any green buildup on any of the surfaces where those o-rings on the tubes sit, or else it will just leak and we will be taking the thing back apart and redoing the whole thing over. Once you have them looking like this, nice and clean, it's time to reassemble. It's best to do this in a vise because these things can get super complicated because of all the parts. It's a pretty delicate operation, but we'll start with the bottom housing in the vise, and what I like to use is Johnson Evinrude Molly Lube with a part number of 768306. I found that this stuff works the best. I've tried oil and other greases, which didn't go as smoothly, so I recommend using this stuff. It works the best. Install an o-ring onto the end of the inner tube. Then lightly lube it up with the molly lube, insert it into the housing, and as you press down, spin the tube so that you can feel it seat properly. Spin it after it is seated to make sure the o-ring didn't roll over too. Then add the other inner tube into the housing the exact same way, and then put the outer tubes in that same way as well. Then grease up the o-rings on the top of the tubes. Now using some good oil like Kroll, squirt the outside of the fuel pump gasket and insert it halfway into the housing. With the wires on the other pump, push it down into the gasket that we put in earlier and make sure it seats properly as well. Mm -hmm. Now with oil on the gasket on the fuel pump, put the fuel pump in and push it down into place. We want to have the gasket on the top housing piece for the fuel pump halfway in
And now we can install a pressure regulator. Make sure you have all of the gaskets on it, squirt it with some oil, and this can be a pain, but press it into the housing. Install a plastic spacer with the O-ring on top of it. And get all of the fuel pumps and tubes lined up with oil on the gaskets. With everything lined up, just wiggle the piece and firmly push down until you get everything to slide into place. This gets us about halfway there. And now we can install the rest of the rubber grommets halfway in place like we did with the fuel pumps. And don't forget the ring and gaskets on the pressure regulator. As well as lubing up the two brown o-rings on the top piece and the o-ring around the housing itself. Now hook up the fuel pump and making sure not to catch the wires, slide the top of the housing down and this can be super tough to get the seat down but just press down until it slides down. Install the four bolts and it's time to pressure test this thing before we try installing it back onto the engine. Using some rubber covers, zip tie them onto the fuel outlet ports and install a pressure pump that can get up to at least 40 psi. If you can get 45 psi that is better because the fuel pressure gets above this. If it will hold that 45, I haven't seen one leak after installing it that did. And that's it. We've finished fixing the newer style FSM. Now just install it back onto the engine and we're done. Since this has been a super in-depth Technician's Tuesday, I won't take up your entire night. We've been so busy that we don't really have much for project updates, but I do want to thank you for sticking around with us anyway. If this is your first Technician's Tuesday, we hope you will check out some of our other videos, which are all about helpful boating hints, tips, and outboard service tricks. Then make sure you get subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell so you won't miss next Tuesday's video. They come out every Tuesday at 4.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, if this has helped you out, hit that like button for us. And if you have any questions, just ask us in the comment section below or reach out to us on our website at bornagainboating.com. You could just Google it and you'll find us that way too. Now enjoy your Tuesday night and we'll see you next week.